In this video, we're going to cover something called triggering. And triggering is actually a pretty cool way to automatically launch applications. If you go to page 49 of the MQ primer, you will read that triggering is a mechanism that is used by Webster MQ to automatically start applications. And we're talking here about executable binary applications, so like a .exe in Windows, for example. To start an application only when there is work available for those applications to process. It can save system resources because an application does not need to be permanently running, perhaps sitting in a long running MQ get call waiting for messages to appear on its input queue. And you can just imagine how important this could be if you've got hundreds of applications and potentially th uh, thousands of applications all trying to run at the same time because you've got multiple integrated systems through MQ, you could run out of RAM and you clearly don't wanna do that. So triggering will let you dynamically launch these applications. So just imagine you have your VM1 here, and we have multiple, well, in this case, we'll simplify. We'll just say we have one application running. And this is, remember, that we are going to be using an MQI interface. So this will be our application A. And just to drive home the point, this will be some sort of executable.exe file. And then separately, we're going to have our VM which is out here and it is just to clarify this is running mq webster mq of course and on that mq message queuing machine we are running of course uh, queue the queue manager and so our queue manager let's draw it like this and that is, of course, our queue manager. And then we know from previous videos that we are also going to have an MQI here. And that is obviously going to be attached to a queue. So that's going to look like this. We'll have messages on the queue. And this queue is going to be called A underscore queue. And the reason for that is because we have an application over here, and that application is going to connect to a queue, so that's the application queue. And at this point, we need to look at our second application, which is B. So we're going to say inside, we're still inside the uh, VM. So this is our application B. We haven't left. This is still running inside here. And just to indicate that that is actually an application, we'll do like so, and we'll do like so here. Probably doesn't have a, a user interface, but it, it could. And so now the question is, what is going to happen? So the first thing um, that you're going to see is that a.exe is going to make a connection over to MQI right, between these two, just like we've really been doing all along here. This, so there's nothing new here. And that connection is going to, as we saw before, that's going to be an MQ put. And then what will happen is this Q here, A underscore Q, is going to have something called a definition. And what does that look like? Well, a define looks like this, and you're telling the system that you have and the system being MQ that you have a queue local a local queue called a underscore Q and you want to replace this so this plus sign just means it's a line continuation and you have a trigger so you are enabling a trigger on this a underscore Q and the trigger type is first that uh, first has a special meaning most of the time it is first you can check the manual here for, for more information about that and you're also going to have something called an initialization queue which we're going to cover and this particular initialization initialization queue is called this system default initiation queue and then there's a process called process one and a description now that proc one or process one that we saw before is then defined here so you do a defined process one proc one and you're saying uh, this is the description this is the name the type of the application windows nt which means it's running on windows and you give it an application id which is the actual path to the executable and if you were running this inside a linux machine it might look something more along these lines 
And just in case you're wondering, well, okay, what does he mean by define? Where on earth would you do that? We haven't covered this yet, but if you were in Linux, you could switch over to the MQ, so MQM here, and on Windows it'd be similar. And then from here, you would run a command called run MQSC, where the C stands for scripting commands, and then you give it a Q name. In the case of ICFM, it's CFMQM. And then here you can issue commands. So, for example, you could issue display, DIS is a shortcut for that, QM status, and it would give you the status of that Q manager, the CFMQM. Or you could display all of the channels. And this should look pretty familiar with the server con that we looked at earlier in the client con down here. And in any case, the point of the screen is to show you this is where you would do these defines. So in context, this is where we define our local queue, and we also enabled triggering here. So we told this system, we told MQ that this will have a trigger on it. But then also notice what we did here. This when we defined this queue, this local queue, we said there was an initiation queue to be associated with it, and that's going to look something like this, which will have messages in its queue and it's doing this because we said we had a trigger and the trigger goes along with this thing called an initiation queue when this happens the system as soon as this occurs here as soon as the application sends its message to the a underscore q the system says ah hold on a second i see that that q a underscore q is a trigger queue and i'm going to create a special message called a trigger message and I'm going to put that here in the initiation queue and you might be thinking well that's weird why would it be doing that well remember the whole point right here is we want to dynamically launch this application It's not running it's installed on the computer but it's not running and the question is how do you get it to launch and so the message that we are interested in this one here MQ get are from a.exe is sitting here in this queue. Well, we don't need it in that queue. We need this B to launch. So here's what happens. Outside of QM, we are still inside MQ, but we are not inside the queue manager here. There's another application that is running, and it's called the trigger monitor. And it is looking for messages that go into the initiation queue. And as soon as it sees that, it's going to say, hmm, I see a message just came in, and now I need to launch this application, which is B. So in other words, this trigger message has been generated, and it has been put on the initiation queue, and then a, that message gets transferred down here to the trigger monitor via mq-get, and then the trigger monitor will launch b.exe. So now B wakes up and says, ah, wait a second, there must be a message for me. So what is it going to do? It's going to go over here to this queue, and like we saw before, it's going to run an mqcon, right? It's going to connect over to the queue manager. It's going to do an MQ open to open up the specific queue, and then it's going to do an MQ get. And that get is going to bring it into the application. So it'll do MQ get to bring the message down and now this is either a destructive get, get or it is which is more likely it's, it's going to remove the, the actual message that was placed here it's going to go away probably or it's going to be a browse get where it doesn't go away it simply is transferred over to b and then that arrow of course is pointing up so this is really interesting think about what we did here we started out with a message from application a and then we had that flow through the system like we've been talking about and it ended up at b but so here's our same message but the interesting thing here is that we had that communication from a to b launch b dynamically this thing wasn't running before and then all of a sudden it was and that is all thanks to triggering then just to bring this point home take a look here we're this is the spss job this is from icfm it says execute the spss job to prepare for profile data for each analysis flow complete these steps create an xml 
trigger message, exactly what we've been talking about. And this is the content that it suggests in that case. So exactly what we've been talking about, these trigger messages that are going to go here. In this case, it won't be tr created by the queue manager. We can create the trigger message. But look at that flow. It's going to go out and it's going to launch b.exe exactly the way we've been talking about. And interestingly, a.exe is on a completely different system. So that makes this a particularly uh, powerful sort of way to run applications on on systems that are located on the network.